Hi, welcome to the Tokenized AI YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Midjourney to create logos. Now, in previous versions of Midjourney, especially with version 3, it wasn't that easy to actually create logos. A lot of people had tried this in the past, but as you can see from this example that I've just created here, it doesn't really add up. You know, I entered pizza restaurant logo, but this isn't exactly a logo. Now, if you spend a lot of time trying to get all the details right and, and you know, started fine tuning and everything, you might have ended up with something that you could use, but it's just too much of a hassle. And that's why most people nowadays would say that with Midjourney, you can't really create any logos. However, with Midjourney version four, things have changed quite a bit and you can now actually create some pretty good logos um, that still have their issues here and there. But um, as long as you, you you use a certain type of template that I seem to have figured out now, um, you actually get to a point where you can use these logos more or less straight out of the box. They do need a few, they, you know, a few, few changes here and there, specifically around typography. Um, but you can even convert these to vector files afterwards as well. So let me just show you with a concrete example. So first of all, before we get going, um, I'm not I'm not going to turn on version four um, by default. Instead, I'm going to use the parameter to just add it to the prompt uh, because I like to work with the default version um, on a standalone basis. So let me start off by entering the imagine command and now we're going to use the following prompt pizza restaurant then followed by white background and this is where the template that i use starts white background logo style flat and then i add version 4 at the end because that's very important with version 3 you would not get the same type of result so let's check out what happens I've been playing around with this a lot. Um, like I said before, the results are not absolutely perfect, but I think you're going to be quite surprised by what you get because most of the things that it's going to propose to you actually look a heck of a lot like what you would get from any standard stock design website. All right, so let me see whether I can speed this up a little bit. So what you can see right now is that it's starting to create the logo and this already looks a lot more like what you would expect right so um, as it gets closer to 100% let's see whether it, how it finishes off but as usual what it always gets wrong is the topography and that unfortunately is something that you're still gonna have to work with um, and where you're gonna have to make changes but for the most part, these actually don't look that bad, right? So especially the one here on the bottom, if you put this into an editing image editor, you could probably tweak this to the point where you could just use it straight out of the box. Now let's try this with something else because you can use the exact same template for roughly any topic you can think of. So this time I'm going to try to create a real estate company logo, a fairly generic one. Um, again, white background. And the reason why I use white background is mainly because you can, I mean, you can just leave it the way it is, but if you do that, one of the big disadvantages is that if it's on a dark background, what Majority will sometimes do is it will add background patterns and things like that, which makes it quite difficult to separate the logo from the background uh, in an image editor afterwards, especially if you want to convert the logo to a vector file. Um, it becomes very, very tricky to separate um, those different parts. So I prefer to put in white background and the background you get is not always pure white but it tends to be a light shade um, that most image tracers, especially the one in Adobe Illustrator, will easily identify. So what you can see here now is our example of a real estate company logo. And yes, it's 
I guess it's fairly generic. But again, this is the kind of stuff that you would find on Shutterstock as well. And these logos are actually very easy to edit. So you would, I'm going to do this a little bit later. Um, you would simply put this through an image tracer in Adobe Illustrator. You would add your own topography and then you're done, right? So this technique is actually very useful, especially if you want to generate ideas or if you're a client, you want to get a certain style, right? And then you just pass that on to an actual logo designer and tell them, listen, make, make me something that looks similar to this, but with a different name. But we can take this actually one step further. So I'm going to try this one. Outdoor clothing brand named Ridge. And then, yes, I mean, this might sound a bit weird, but that actually does work. It doesn't use the name Ridge or it, it's not actually capable of spelling out Ridge properly. But believe it or not, it does understand the word. So let's see what comes out this time. I've done these before, I must admit, right? So these are not 100% random. Um, the next one is going to be slightly random, but um, I've tested around with some of these just to see whether you can actually do what I just did. For example, um, not actually describe the object, but just the overall theme and what it's going to be used for. Uh, and it does work surprisingly well. So let's look at this as it starts to progress. And you can already see this is actually pretty good. And this is the kind of thing that you would most likely pass on to another logo designer or illustrator, somebody who's actually capable of doing proper topography work, or if this is something that you do yourself. Um, yeah, this takes away, I mean, this actually removes a big chunk of the work that you would normally do. Now, obviously, as you can see here, these circles are not perfect, but I would argue that especially this one works quite well. And I like this one on the on the bottom right as well. And this one actually in top left isn't bad as well. Isn't bad either. Anyway, so let's try this one last one that's going to be completely at, um, random. So let's say uh, I was going to try to do something for sports teams. So let's say you're looking for an ice hockey um, team. I'm going to try to let's assume the t it's a, let's see let's say, just to say it's your kid's team. Let's say that their name is the Bears or something. Bear. Or let's say Grizzly Bear. And we do the same thing. White background. Logo style. Let's try this. I have not tested this before, but sports logo style flat and version 4. Let's see what this gives us. So my basic template is the topic or the subject, then white background, then logo style, then flat, and then I add the version for algorithm modifier. Now you don't need to necessarily add flat. You could probably also play around with the styles a little bit more. Um, but well, there you go. See, that's exactly what I was hoping for. See how this loads. Yeah, these these look great. These look these look much better than I expected. <laughs> so it's all almost done. Right, so this is something I don't know. You would pick whichever one you prefer. You pass it on to an illustrator or, or a logo designer and ask him, listen, this is the kind of thing I want. You could technically even use parts of this and just add a cleaner, cleaner topography for the name of the team. But um, this is exactly what you would expect, isn't it? Now, let's say we wanted to do what I just said. I'm going to copy, take a screenshot of this, and I'm going to switch over to Adobe Illustrator. Paste this in here. Let me just quickly zoom out a little. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to run this through an 
image tracer. Um, not just a second. The I'm not 100% sure what the results will be what I'm hoping for. However, let's just see. It's a bit too many colors. There's an, there are other image tracers out there. However, based on my personal experience, Adobe Illustrator still has by far the most effective one. Most of the others are a bit hit or miss. And even this one obviously is not perfect, but let me just switch. I'm now gonna use expand. And basically it's now turned this into a, whoops, a vector image. And you've got these portions. Now it's not perfect, right? Cause I removed part of the gray color here, but what you would do now is you would just add something below it. So let's say, let's say your company is called Hudson's and company, and you would create something like this, Hudson's and Company, real estate brokers. And, and there you go. I mean, it's not perfect, right? But you get the gist of it. And this allows you to create logos that are scalable. Wait, oh, there's artifacts, there you go. That are scalable and you can do whatever you want with it afterwards. You can recolor it and anything. So this was my quick introduction into just how to do logo design in mid journey. I hope you found this useful. And if you enjoyed the video, remember to like and hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time in the next video. Cheers. Bye.